All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to write content for Shopify collections pages. And I'm gonna show you how to do it for SEO so that you can actually get your Shopify collections pages to rank on Google and get traffic to your e-com store. So to do this, I highly recommend that you have an SEO tool such as SEMrush, which is gonna allow you to search up the keywords that you should include on these particular pages. So if you don't have a keyword tool, I'm gonna to put my affiliate link for SEMrush below this video. If you click that link, you can get a seven day free trial. And in theory, you can do what I'm going to show you in this video. And then if you don't want to keep using it, you don't have to pay anything. Now, in order to actually write the content, we need to figure out what Google wants to see for that particular keyword that you want this page to rank for. So what you need to figure out is what to include. Now, this is where a tool like this comes in. So let's say, for instance, I'm going to use an example of my e-com store that I'm putting together, which is selling performance suspension for performance cars. They're called coilovers. So basically, if I was to type in coilovers into SEMrush, you can also do this in any other tool like Ahrefs or whatever. What it's going to do is it's going to give us the keywords relating to this topic, and it's also going to give us the search results. So basically what you need to figure out here is what content Google wants to see on each collection page that's appropriate to that collection page, and then write that so that it ranks. So there's two things you want to look at here. One is the related keywords and in the keyword variations, and we'll go over that in a second. And the second is what actually shows up on Google search. So what you first need to identify is what type of website your website is and what is the search result because let's say for instance we're talking about specifically e-com collection stores here something like this result won't necessarily be relevant because this isn't actually an e-com store it's more the brand talking about the suspension so you can't really use this as an example, but what you can use is all of the other e-com stores. So if we open all of these up, especially the ones who are towards the top of the page, you'll start to get an idea of what Google actually wants to see. So all the ones that are home pages, they're again gonna be kind of difficult to compare against, but what you can do is open the ones that have the actual collection ranking. And then this is gonna tell you exactly what you need to know. So this is a collection page, this is a collection page, this is a brand page, but it's, it is a collection as well. And they have some content, so we can get an idea from this too. This is a home page, so this isn't exactly appropriate. So we've got a couple of examples here for this particular keyword. So now what you would want to do is take a look and see what is actually written on this page. So for instance, you can see the keyword in the headline, which is obviously the standard thing you have to do for SEO. But now you can see that they have a bit of content about what their particular product is. And it's got an H2 here as well. Yep. And now if we scroll down, you can see more content here. So now they're talking more about their particular coilovers and they've included variations of the keyword here, coilover kits, which is smart. They've got a video, which is good. Installation and DIY, that's actually very good as well because now you have different DIY and installation related things. And now they have FAQs with the headlines and the keywords in the headline. So this is very good because you want to make a note of all of these. So now you can see that these guys are actually ranking the highest and I can see why this is actually very good content. They're number two. Now let's go to the next one. You can see here, they've got the headline. They've got a little bit of content. Then they have their products again. Typically you'll find that that's the format for collections pages. And then below this, okay, so these guys don't actually have more content. I know in a lot of other category pages, these guys do on this one, I guess they don't and they're ranking. So that's good to note, but they have a little bit of content. And then these guys have the same thing, title and then content. So what this is telling me is if we can get closer to this page, we're more likely to rank for this keyword with all these different variations. So you would want to make a note of this, like I said, and I would go back into SEMrush and now look at all the different keyword variations. These questions are extremely good because this is something that you would want to include on this page. So in this case, like what are coilovers? What do coilovers do? In theory, you could have whole blogs about these. However, you could have a FAQ with this as a subheadline, and then that could link to that blog as well. So that's just another idea of how you could create like a silo on a particular topic. But in any case, you wouldn't want to include these as subheadings on this page. And if we go to keyword variations, we can have a look at what's going on here. Now, one other thing you want to note is what is the word count for each of these pages? So obviously for these, it's extremely low. So I wouldn't worry about them in this particular case, but you can see here, this one has a lot of words. So I would probably throw this into a word counter. You can just search one up. Wordcounter.net is this one. It's very good. And basically, if we take this, I'm just going to copy the whole lot just to give us an idea of how many words are in this one. So 1700 words. So that's basically a whole article. So now you could aim for something around this same line because they're up high. So clearly that's working. Now in this list of keywords, you need to be aware of different variations and not relevant to this. So for instance, 
There's a lot of brands under coilovers. So for instance, BC, BC Racing, Racelands, Tain. These are all brands which I would not include on the main page, aside from obviously links to the specific brand collection. However, what you do want to go is scroll down and see a variation. So for instance, coilover shocks, or got what are coilovers again, or coilovers versus springs. You could include that. You could include, this is a car model, so we don't want that. Coilover suspension is a variation of the keyword coilover, so you'd want to make a note of that. There's another question here. What do coilovers Overs do so what i would do is open up a notepad and start writing all of these variations down so we let's start from the top so we've obviously got coilovers the main keyword we have coilover shocks we have what are coilovers coilovers versus springs coilover suspension what do coilovers do now, just as a side note, with something like this, you would want to open this keyword up and actually take a look at what's in the search results because you'll probably find that you'll need a whole article for this one. Yeah, you can see uh, these results are not the best, but you can see that what's mostly ranking is specific things, what are coilovers or something along those lines. Like I mentioned, you could include them as a subheadline for sure and have a link to that page and that'll be a good chance to internal link as well but you would want to have it as a subheading here and then make a whole page. Adjustable coilovers. So basically best coilovers. What we're doing here is getting the different variations we want to include because the more of these you can include in the H2s and H3s, the more likely your page is to rank for a lot of these keywords. We got struts as well. Coilovers versus struts. How to adjust coilovers. Coilover springs. Coilovers versus shocks. I think we have that, yep. Well, we've got coilover shocks at least. Most of these are now brands. Coilover suspension, what is coilover? Adjusting, do we have adjusting? How to adjust, yep. So that, we've now got a pretty decent list of things we can include on this page. So now what we can do is start putting together content for this. Now, there's a range of ways you can do that. You can either manually write it or you can use a tool like, let's say, ChatGPT to write parts of this, or you can use a tool like ZimWriter, which I've spoken about a number of times. I'm gonna put a link above to a ZimWriter video on how to use that. It's a really, really good tool and I highly recommend it. I'll put my affiliate link below for ZimWriter as well if you wanna get it. But basically, you would need to take these and make different variations. So I'm gonna go through this example with you on my actual Shopify store and we'll put some headlines and some content together so you can see what it is now in order to actually do the content what you need to do is go to products and then collections and in collections you want to go to the collection and then you need to write the content in here that's where you'll need to write it in the description box and then when you actually open the collection you'll see that this is where the content displays now this is going to depend on your theme exactly where it displays and so on but basically you would want to include it in the description here now if we take this list of keywords you can see here that now we want to try and include as many of these as possible so what we could do is i've included this section already in a previous example to do with internal linking so that takes care of the keyword coilover brands you could do coilover kit brands as well or coilover suspension actually I'll probably put here. So now we've got coilover suspension as a keyword. Now you could just take that off the list. So you could definitely have something like what are coilovers and that's an H2 and you would have some content in here, right? And then, so I'm just filling in the headlines for now. We'll remove what are coilovers. We can go coilovers versus lowering springs. And I know that that's a, a big one and you can have the content in there as well. Now we can go to the next one. I would actually include what do coilovers do as an H3 in here. So we'll chuck that in there. You can get creative with this and find ways to include these headings and subheadings into this content. So you can have an extra bit of content because this is technically sub under this one, but it, it is appropriate. So you can have what are coilovers, coilovers are a type of performance suspension, blah, blah. And then what do they do? And then you can go into that there. Now we've got coilovers versus lowering springs. I would go adjustable coilovers versus lowering springs here. This is appropriate because lowering springs are not adjustable. So it does kind of work. Now we've got this one. And then we could go how to select the best coilovers for your car. And now we've got best coilovers in here as well. I have a little guide there, which could link to a specific article. You could also have that in there as an H2. So now we've already got a decent amount of subheadlines that we can have on this page and fill in the content for. And this alone is already ahead of what's most of the ones on page one. But if we want to go back, we could go back to, to SEMrush and find any questions we can add in the FAQ as well, because that's a good way to get more keywords in here. So for instance, how long do coilovers last? That could be an FAQ. Can you adjust coilovers while they are on the car? That could also go under the adjusting coilovers as an H3. Are coilovers worth it? That could be a section in the H2 as well, or you could have a separate post to it, but this will, again, give you the opportunity to link to it, which would be a good idea. 
I'm going to include it as part of the FAQ. Okay, so that's just an example now of some headlines that we could have from the keywords we've seen here. And these can all be FAQs. So I'm going to go and I'm going to put them in here. So this would be an H2. Then you got these as H3s. You would obviously want to format these correctly. Now that we've got the main headline, so this is basically the outline of the content we want on this page. Now you would want to go through and fill out this content. So now obviously the way you do this is going to depend on how you want to do it, whether you want to write it manually, whether you want to use a tool. I recommend using something like Zimwriter. I think that's really good. I'm going to show you an example of what this would look like if we put it through Zimwriter in this video now, and you'll see what, what it can do. So what we'll do is I'm going to open Zimwriter and we'd go to the SEO blog writer here and what we'd want to do is now fill in the blog title and the content and the headlines and so what's going to happen is it's basically going to produce a blog but we can use that as the content here so what i'm going to do is just put I'm just going to call it the ultimate guide to coilovers to give zimwriter some direction as to what it's going to write about then you can put some global background in here if you've got another website or a youtube video or something like that you want it to scrape and use the content from you can do that then you want to select the subheadings now i'm going to go through manually here and select all the different subheadings now again i'm not going to go into detail on how to use zimwriter specifically in this video i'm just going to show you an example of what it could do you can go watch my other video on how to use it if you want to know in depth how to do this. But basically, I'm just going to put all these variations in and we'll let it spit something out. Okay, and we can go through and hit the settings we want here. You can also select if you want to FAQ or not. I've already got manual FAQ I've inputted. And now I'm just going to let it write. So we'll let it write this article. Okay, and now Zimwriter is done and it spat out the article based on the titles that we put in. So we could copy this. I usually just put it in a Word document just to make it easier to work with. And now we could go and use this content and fill in the spaces in our description. So we could go through and just, let's say, got the document and copy this part. Now, obviously you would want to go through and edit this content. It's not always 100% accurate, especially on technical things like this coilovers, for instance, it appears to be mostly talking about suspension in general. However, there is some accuracy, but my point is that now we have content we can use on this page. So this is one way that you could produce this content and this would work for this particular case as long as you edit it for your particular use case. So that is how I would put together content for collections pages. Now, this is obviously going to depend largely on what your specific niche is and what you're trying to rank for. So I would recommend going through this process every time and look up what Google actually wants to see on page one and that will dictate what you should actually write in your content. So just to give you a quick example of something else, let's say for instance here we went to men's sunglasses and you're, that's what you're selling and you're making a collection of men's sunglasses, you would want to go to the keyword overview and you would do the same process I showed you in this video, which would be figure out what keywords you need to include that are relevant to the particular topic of that collection. You can make sub collections under that collection and obviously do the content in the exact same manner. If it's specific brands, you would do like Ray-Bans glasses or Gucci glasses here, for instance. And then you would write all about Gucci glasses. You would also want to go through the page one results and see what is actually ranking on page one and what content they have. Now, in some cases, you'll find some websites that have very high authority don't have any content and they're still ranking because they are just basically a giant in the niche. As you can see here, it appears that this might be an example of that. But what you would want to do is go through all the results until you find one that has some content and then that's going to give you the answer to what you're looking for. Now, this is not usually usually going to be the case that there's no content unless it's a very competitive niche. Like obviously you can imagine men's sunglasses are a very competitive niche, but you can see here, I opened up a three and this already has the content there. So you're going to find content and this is a very good way to tell you what you should be writing about. Now, just see here as well, you got links here. I spoke about this in one of my previous videos on internal linking on Shopify. If you haven't watched that, I'd recommend you go watch it. The link is up here. But basically writing this content also gives you a chance to interlink correctly to create the silo on your site and then that is actually going to help you with SEO as well. So that is how I would write content for my Shopify collections pages. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you would like me to coach you on how to SEO your Shopify store for only $49 a month, go to learndominatemarketing.com. And if you'd like us to do the SEO for your Shopify store, go to dominatemarketing.io and book a call with us there. Catch you on the next one.